Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. So on the show we're going to be announcing the giveaway winners for the community question of the week that just ended right now. The community question of the week was how do you feel as an encounter a runner in Losac? And we've got two winners, each of them will be receiving a one Omega combo clone. So, first winner is Dharma64 with the comment T10 rewards were way too big from the start. They tried and talked so much about not having ISK inflation as EVE Online did, and then introduced the biggest faucet of them all. Maybe they are okay if the players can be scanned down. I'm doing them. Who wouldn't? But glad they will be hard. Indeed, they will be once the scanning is launched. You'll be able, to, uh, players will be able to scan you down if you are in low sec encounters at beacons. Currently, you are immune because no one can find you unless someone sends you a fleet invite and you accept like a noob. We've already talked about scanning in a previous episode and how the scanning mechanism will work. When will we get that uh, special? warning that somebody's scanning you down and when not. It's going to be pretty important that players do stay active while they're running the low sec encounters. And uh, the only fear that I have is about the storyline missions because they're pretty much set up in the same systems, almost. If you run 10 such story missions, like the same story missions over and over again, you'll notice that you get sent through the same systems over and over again, with small differences. But nonetheless, it's pretty obvious for the other players that will be scanning other people down where to look for other people. So stay frosty and uh, fly safe, I guess. Moving over to the second winner, and uh, his name is Frosty Jack, with the comment, Oh, and as for the community question, this is an amazing change in terms of balance. Encounter running is, for the most part, a completely risk-free method of AFK grinding an income. It has practically alienated an entire portion of what makes an open-world sandbox game fun, which was, uh, indeed, solo and small gang PvP. However, therein lies a problem. Will the people who want to grind the game casually be completely turned away when they suddenly start getting destroyed by hungry pirates? This seems to be a continuous theme in the Echoes community. How do you cater to both sides of the coin without hampering the gameplay of the other side? It's conundrums such as this which make me glad I am not a developer. Frosty Jack is right. Uh, initially, EVE Echoes, as I mentioned in uh, the Total Biscuit tribute video of WTF is EVE Echoes, the title was released and announced as to be a casual spin off version of EVE Online. And they've been trying to find some common grounds between the hardcore players and the casual players. Like, casual players can sit in high sec, running counts, blah blah blah, while hardcore players can go into null sec and do alliances and cooperation and fight against each other in wars of thousands of players. But low sec has pretty much been a grey area, and right now it's starting to shift towards hardcore. While the mechanics for the casual player base, which was supposed to be the encounter section and the counter system, is suddenly taking a hit. Meanwhile, congratulations to our two winners of today, Doma64 and Frosty Jack. Please leave a comment below with your in-game name and your character ID so I can pass that information down to the people responsible in handing out the prizes. Also, stay tuned until the end of the video because we will be launching yet another community question of the week with, yet again, two Omega Combo clones ready to be sent out to two lucky winners. Moving on to our main course of tonight, which is pretty much the exploration reveal of Nihilus Space and how it will work, what riches will we be gaining from Nihilus Space, and how how it will be the the I don't know the mechanics like the behavior and such. For starters, we know that each pocket uh, of Nihila space will have like some anomalies. Could be belts or could be dead spaces. And there's be there's got to be some beacons. And those beacons will offer some protection around uh, the beacon location, which will be around I don't know some hundreds of kilometers, so that your ship won't be destroyed by the gamma burst rays. So 
it's pretty much unknown how will we be traveling from a Nihilus pocket to another because it's written here that you cannot warp uh, inside of these um, safety bubbles. What is Nicholas Space? Well, in my opinion, it's pretty much a combination of Wormhole Space from EVE Online, which is called Anoe Keys, and um, Abyssal Dead Space, which is another mechanic from EVE Online. But since something needed to be unique inside EVE Echoes, I think they merged some of the functionalities in both of these uh, features and resulted our feature that we'll be receiving in early June, which is Nihilus Space. Now, why do I say they're similar to how Wormhole Space works? Well, uh, we're going to call Nihilus Space N Space from now on because it's pretty easy and I pretty much called dibs on this naming on Twitter. So, we are told that N Spaces uh, or N Pockets will be accessible via these Gravity Wells. Now, Gravity Wells is actually, in fact, pretty obvious, a portal of some sort that will take you to end space. But guess what uh, is the mechanic that does a similar thing in EVE Online? It's the wormholes. Again, there's temporary uh, wormholes that you can pass through and you enter in Arnoi Keys in wormhole space. Now, there's a possibility of encountering hidden gravity wells in almost all star systems. I suspect these will be scannable, uh, like you should be able to use your scanner to find them. I hope so. That would make scanning and exploration like a thing, like to track down these gravity wells. And this will be occurring in high sec. We're not sure of low sec, but definitely in high sec. In no sec, however, these will not be spawning unless uh, you have control over the territory. Like it will only be happening sovereignty claimed uh, star systems, in which, of course, you have a citadel because you need the citadel to to claim uh, sovereignty and we will be having some modules not sure if, if, if the, these modules are going to be accessible for the corp citadels as well we know in the echoes corp citadels don't have a fitting screen uh, it was promised to us that we'll be able to have like some modules that can be anchored and tethered to the the citadels but in the announcement it's only mentioned for the capsule outpost so Definitely, you need to have a citadel to have sovereignty, and then you have you need to have a corporation outpost as well, and fit this, um, these, or this one of these two devices, which is the all gravity well trap device and the dead space gravity well trap device. What are they too? Because inside and space, there's two types of anomalies or sites that you can run. It's the um, a mining hidden mining belts, which give you rich ore, which is ten times the normal ore that you find. It's not condensed, which is a hundred times. It's rich. It's just ten times uh, more uh, compressed or something like that. And there's special dead space anomalies that uh, uh, you go inside and do. They're owned by pirate factions, by the way. And you go inside of them and run them and they will be dropping some stuff that you need to reverse engineer in order to get some specific materials with which you can upgrade, uh, I think, I hope so, this was a tease long ago, months ago, the C-type modules, because it's an overflow of them on the market, you'll be able to disassemble the C-types, uh, use the materials from the C-types, plus the materials you find in end space inside these dead spaces, and combine them and do like B-type, a-type and X-type. Initially, months ago, it was um, revealed that only the B-types will be introduced. Now we get the information that we'll have B-types, A-types and X-types. So all types of Dead Space modules will be available. I'm guessing depending on the difficulty of the Dead Space, you will be getting materials um, for B, which is advanced, more advanced than the C, or even more harder, and you will be getting the A, and I don't know, ultimate difficulty, you probably need a fleet to do those, like a big fleet, and get the X-type materials. It's also mentioned that inside uh, the um, N space, which can be accessible via the gravity wells, it can be found throughout the um, NPC-owned regions in, inside the um, Empire factions, these will be pretty much badlands in terms of you go inside and you can be PvP with everyone else. It's like an all sack. However, in 
Noltec, where you have these modules that you kind of force a gravity well, a wormhole to end space to appear after you jump inside you basically be inside a pocket that is pretty much protected from outside intervention this pretty much leads us to the conclusion that the end space pockets do communicate communicate with each other via other gravity wells that sit inside end space so for example if i jump inside an end space and i have a gravity well that leads me to it Inside there, I'll probably find one or n gravity wells that lead me to other end space pockets. Now, because uh, the pockets, the end space pockets generated uh, by the uh, NullSec modules from uh, from the Corporation Outpost are pretty much secure, uh, it means that players that enter end space from Empire space, for example, can't reach your pocket. However, you can leave your pocket and travel further into end space. Now, the players can find a workaround uh, while not being able to travel to your secure location. They can do that if they travel to where the portal was created, which is in Nolsec, where you have sovereignty, and jump inside the secure pocket from there. Then they'll probably be able to, like, nuke you. I don't know how gravity walls work. It's not mentioned here. Will they be collapsing? What's going to be the mechanism of them spawning, despawning? What happens to the pocket inside? See, in Abyssal Death Space, you jump, you have a limited timer. If you don't do the stuff and get out, the, the pocket, I don't know, collapses and you die and whatever. Here, it's not mentioned what happens if the gravity well closes and you become stuck inside. Do consider that we don't have an eject... Uh, function available so you cannot eject from your ship and you can only self-destruct while in a pod you cannot self-destruct while sitting inside a ship so if you become trapped there what's going to be what's going to become of those players they will have to be like travel 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 until they like meet somebody in end space and please please pod express me home <laughs> i've been here for like three months help me water <laughs> It's going to be hilarious. I don't know. We're going to see. We have the information that inside end space will be suffering from various spatial distortion or anomalies, such as affecting our capacitor or affecting our recharge rates for the capacitor. We don't know if there's going to be like in wormhole space, um, you know, those higher classes in, in wormhole space in EVE Online that uh, like the Magnetor or the Black Hole that affect tracking, damage, shield resistances, armor resistances, all sorts of that crap. So no info about that. One section in the announcement actually uh, hints at something terrible that the players might do, which is to use their gravity wells to jump inside end space and just wait and camp on the other side. For any unsuspecting player that just jumps and like gets instantly murdered with bubbles, interceptors, tevi dictors, whatever you want. So probably corporations and uh, alliances will immediately take this opportunity to camp these while their industry fleets are going around the system or the region or end space pocket that they're inside, clearing up pretty much everything in terms of resources, doing the dead spaces, making sure the pocket is secure, and then move on to another pocket or just return home via gravity well or I don't know. Again, uncertainty what happens, how does a gravity well collapses? Do we scan these gravity wells inside end space? Or will we need a scanning module fitted? Again, questions that might find an answer soon. One player suggested that it's probably more like rooms. You like you jump inside the end space with the gravity well, and then you find the weird room like is for you, and then another gravity well that leads you to another pocket, and which is shared with other players that might join in from other gravity wells spawned inside other parts of the galaxy. Me, in my part, I have some curiosities. So, uh, I think the two most important, or well, let's say three most important curiosities, one of which we've already talked about, like eh, what happens if the gravity well collapses, what happens if you remain stuck there, what then? 
The other two are pretty important. Like, we know Wormhole Space was inside Eve Echoes, but was unavailable. We've discovered it, I did a video a long time ago when I noticed it, it was just sitting there in plain sight hidden in the map just you had to scroll like in some specific direction now that was completely hidden when they re uh, remade the uh, the map and it was when the sovereignty was launched however you can still find those systems if you search them inside the map search to expand on what i was trying to say is this end space pretty much developed from scratch or it's going to be like that wormhole space uh, being put to good use and being redesigned and used in recycled and used in the creation of the end space. Well, guess I guess we'll have to see um, if the system or the pockets that we'll be jumping in will have any indication or any I don't know like the J system indication like the wormholes have. And the last curiosity that I have is. Will we be able to deploy stations inside there? It would be awesome, but if it's indeed like you jump inside the end space and there's a bunch of pockets that you can navigate in between using these gravity wells, uh, I doubt it. Because you know, like, there's a beacon, you need to stay inside that beacon, and it has like 100 kilometers radius of protection. We know that the outpost or the citadel, uh, yeah, no, the, the citadel without question will not be able to be deployed, but the capsule outpost for certain uh, is like every structure needs to be deployed 50,000 kilometers away from any other structure, be it beacon, planet, moon, other station, whatever. So probably not, but it will be fun and interesting to do. Of course, we can ask a bunch of other questions, such as uh, what happens if I jump inside an end space pocket using a gravity wall and I travel through the gravity walls inside the end space and uh, ultimately can I get a gravity well that leads to another empire system outside, a, let's say, 50 jumps away from where I initially entered? Or how will the chat behave once you jump inside end space? Uh, will you have like a weird a local chat that doesn't display anyone like, you know, because there's no communication beacons. You don't have a list of players, but if you type and message other people that are inside the, the pocket will see you. Or maybe no chat at all. That would be completely weird. Will there be a timer on these pockets? Uh, like an abyssal, there's no mention of it anywhere. So yeah, this announcement pretty much clarifies what Endspace is and how it works, but raises a bunch of other stuff and questions that uh, we will probably get an answer to uh, in early June, because it, the expansion, the exploration expansion, is just around the corner. It's We're currently at the end of May, so I'm expecting exploration feature to drop like first week or second week of June after a downtime after or Wednesday. In conclusion, that's pretty much exactly what I was trying to say. I think the end space is a combination of wormhole mechanics and abyssal dead space mechanics and they try putting it together to create something unique and not just like rip off Eve Online. Sure, I admire innovation and trying to come up with something new and unique for the player base. But I guess we'll see how it goes, and if maybe it would have been better to just go with delivering wormhole space and the sleeper and whatever. We know for certain that we live in an alternate universe, I'm calling it Alter New Eden. And this universe pretty much split off of the main Evil Line universe when Caroline's star collapsed, actually went supernova. We know in Evil Lion this was caused by the Drifters because they wanted to shut down the permanent uh, wormholes leading to Arno Ikis. But here in Eve Echoes, um, there's a bit of some inconsistencies with the, with the law and um, how exactly everything developed. There's also been a gap of some years. I'm going to try to explain this in the chronicle that I'm writing, by the way. It's going to be called Neutrino Tango. So I'm, and after I finish it, I'll be in contact with the uh, law team and uh, try to get this Chronicle canon. Wish me luck, guys. And we've reached the point in the video when we need to 
announce the next community question of the week. And guess what? The question is, how do you feel about Endspace? How much of an opportunity it represents to you as a pilot? Be your casual or hardcore, how does the prospect of having some unknown parts of space ready to explore, but you might find riches or you might find a bubble on the other side with just like three, four, ten, twenty happy pirates camping the shit out of you. <laughs> Leave your comments below and let me know and automatically get into the giveaway that will be revealing the next two winners next week on Wednesday. That's it for today. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys for watching. A very big shout out to my channel supporters and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.